Well, hello everyone. I'm sitting here down with Stefan from Skiss. That's a Swedish company, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, and he has a wonderful product called Uniview. And we would like to show you a little bit what that all is about. Um, so, we're seeing the Earth. And most people will know that view already from uh, Google Earth, of course. Um, but why is this so special? What, 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 what can people do differently here than uh, at Google Earth at home? Well, first of all, Uniview is, is a software for domed environments. So what we can do is bring this up on the dome and share the experience. So it's not a one-person experience anymore. It becomes a data exploration of this, all this satellite imagery that can be shared among hundreds of you know, visitors or you know, people in the domed environment. So we see Chicago here. Yeah, yeah that's pretty. That, that's where we still are, of course. See if we recognize ourselves. We're somewhere. We're somewhere out here, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. I think the, the southern part, the top one, is the, the Navy Pier. So right. We're yeah. On the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, that's where the planetarium is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the whole idea with this is to. Um, you know, the Earth is, is a planet, and a planetarium is for studying planets. Right? Yes. So what we're doing with our Earth, which we call Geoscope, is to bring in databases from all kinds of sciences related to global issues like geography, geology, but also things like climatology. So we have all the NOAA layers here, for example. Um, uh, as, as well as NASA, uh, NASA so on Earth. Can we see an example? I think sure. we saw yesterday something with forest fires that sure. showed some some very interesting data um, that we might be able to show here. So if I pull out and I just bring out the geoscope interface, this is how you actually interact with it. What I'll do is just select the active fires layer here. Like that. And what we can see is that all of a sudden, if we come into, let's see, we're going to have some of the fire. So. Oh, sorry. Let's go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> so, uh, well, we need to find a couple of places where there's fire starting. Well, probably in the night sky, we should be able to see. There we have beautiful Earth by Night vision. So what I'm going to do is just change change my time to bring to bring Asia into daylight. So this is how we work with with the, with the time and the control over our simulation. You see? Okay. So uh, <coughs> so again, cloud layers here. Let's just pick them up and see. Obviously, there's a lot available. Yeah. What we're gonna do is just oops. See how that works out for us. Jesus, I want to get something else. <laughs> Bear with me for just I, I'm a asking difficult questions. <laughs> I'm just going to bring up a couple of layers and see what kind of data we have in these layers. But one thing is already very apparent is not just the numbers of layers that are, are available also the amount of data we can put in a date of a, uh, indeed a specific date of forest fires and see what was going on at that point in time or carbon monoxide uh, pollution uh, volcanic eruptions all that stuff is available and you can turn it on and off at will pretty much yeah. although we seem to have a little bit of an issue here actually turning it on <laughs> Bear with me, Justin. well otherwise let, let's move on because um, uh, of course Uniview is not just Earth. That's right, absolutely. So what I'll do is just 
Oh, oh there we go. Oh, hey, yeah. there we have a layer. Ah. So, <laughs> this is a carbon monoxide layer, I believe, yeah. wasn't it? Ah, this is carbon monoxide. Yes, it's over there. So, just to explain what actually happened there was what this does: it accesses servers online and grabs the data from the web. Oh, so, wow. so depending okay. on your connection, and we're on a pretty slow wireless connection here. Yes. It may take a while until the data actually, you know, until we establish the connection with the server. So, you know, with, let me just show you this, because what we can do is also, you know, work with our capacity controls to, to create, you know, combination of different maps to, to communicate any particular. So what we're looking at right now is, is again, carbon monoxide levels. And if we have the active layers open, we'd see that Myanmar right now is yeah. pretty much on fire. Yes. And, and yeah. the result of that, as you can see here, is a huge concentration of carbon monoxide in the air over that area. Yeah. So this is the type of earth monitoring system that, yes. that you know, we're... Yeah. And of course, that is very important to know with global warming and what kind of influences does a fire have yeah. on, for example, Texas or just the U.S. in general. Exactly. Um, let's fly somewhere. Let, let, let's fly to Saturn. Let's fly to Saturn. Let's fly to Saturn because this is Uniview, as I said before. It is so beautiful. And here we go, people. And it's all automated. You don't have to do anything. There you have the planetary orbits. And there we have a <laughs> website popping up. <laughs> that was not intentional. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get when you do things live. And there we go. Zooming in onto the... So we're coming in on the Saturn system. You can see how Unity automatically fades out all the orbits. Yes, I don't know. No need to control anything. As you can see, it's the next one. So the same with that. It's going to be that we just want to see. Saturn is so even. Coming up on Saturn, let's, let's pay particular attention to, to the behavior of the Terminator at the rim of the planet. So you can see how you got this bluish tint towards the edge of the planet. And that's exactly what it looked like. If you compare this image to, to something from Cassini, for example, yes. you'll see that. And really also, spot on. look at the beautiful shadow of the rings on the planetary surface. It is so realistic. It, it's, th th this is almost scary and <laughs> beautiful. This is so gorgeous. And imagine seeing this on a full dome environment, really around you, like you are flying uh, around Saturn. Okay. Look at that. Also notice that diff different colors of the rings depending on if you look at forward scattering of the light yeah. through the rings or backwards. Yeah. So with that, do you want to move on to uh, to Mars, for example? Yeah, let's take a look at Mars, and then I think um, That's we can call it a day. All right. There's a lot of things going on on Mars right now. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So what I like to do is just cruise over to Mars to show you. Uh, some of the imagery that we have from the Themis layer. The Themis is, um, uh, I keep forgetting what, what it's short for, but the Themis infrared layer anyway is, okay. is a really high resolution representation of, of, uh, of the Mars surface. So we'll see as we come up. Mars at night. Mars at night. <laughs> There we go, beautiful. So what we'll see is, I use the same tool, only this time it's not Geoscope for Mars, but Geoscope for Earth. So it just recognizes we're at Mars and... Exactly. And, wow. Exactly. So just selecting the theme is mostly it right here. Adding that. Let's see if we can find some place familiar. Oh, there's there's one of Mars moons, by the way. Right? That's, oh, that's, yeah, that's, little, that's, little, that's little black dot going by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's see. We want to find maybe. Um, you know, I was looking for Valles. Oh, there you go, Valles Mariner. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so coming out on Valles Mariner. What we're going to do is actually descend through the Martian atmosphere and look at what this what this really looks like. So, just tilting my camera over. Actually, what we're going to do is remove the GUI. Go full screen. There we go. And we can just fly in like that. Fly in. We're gonna descend through the atmosphere, tilt our camera just a little bit more to get a nice flight simulator. And type note also that the atmosphere indeed is visible. That that is rendered in, oh, yeah. even in the right color, yeah. very realistic. That is so beautiful. 
So here we are cruising over uh, the, the central parts of Valles Marineris. You can see even on Mars we got heights, we got terrain. So this is this is pretty much the most realistic data-driven image of Mars that we can ever generate. Uh, and at the moment new data comes out, then we have a new image here. Obviously with the yes. new theme is coverage yes. of Mars, we'll, we'll see higher and higher resolution. And that automatically goes on to the server. So we just grab, grab the latest data, whatever it is. So the capacity of the system will grow.